Hey, what's going on guys? Brendan here at a Washington Online. So I have with me my Hemstall Workshop with gun held watches, Visinger Adventurer watch. This is a watch that I recently did an unboxing of, but today you get in the full review. I've had this watch on wrist pretty much the entire time uh, since that unboxing video. It stayed on wrist. It's given me a a much better appreciation of this watch and I have a better understanding of it now as well. This watch has surprised me in a lot of ways that I didn't expect and the first thing that actually surprised me is just how comfortable this watch is. I have it off wrist now because I wanted to show you guys something. I wanted to show you uh, just how abruptly that the bracelet comes down from the lugs. It falls extremely flat. It's a really sharp drop off there. Really flat back of the case. And the links here are extremely flat and flush with each other. That it just provides an overall really comfortable feel on wrist that I didn't expect from a watch of this price point or a watch of this size in general. This is my largest watch at 44.8 millimeters. And I know that sounds big to a lot of you guys, but take a look at this. It fits really firmly right in the middle of your wrist and it stays there because of how that bracelet is designed. That's something I didn't expect. And I'd actually say it feels smaller on wrist than my Long Jeans Hydro Conquest or my Omega Seamaster which are both smaller at 42 millimeters. While we're on the subject of the bracelet, it not only feels nice, but it looks nice and it's designed well. Here you're going to have screw down pin bars, which is something that I actually didn't get on my $1,200 long jeans. And that's something you sometimes don't get on watches that are far past this price point. And you also have a nicely designed class it has the Axe Insignia on it, which is their logo. Six micro adjustment points to get that perfect fit. A friction closure, as well as a twin button release. Here, I'm testing it out now. And unless both buttons are pressed simultaneously, this watch isn't going to go anywhere. So this watch is going absolutely nowhere, no matter what you're doing. And uh, that's a higher quality bracelet than a lot of other uh, watches, the competition, I'd say. The bracelet is handsomely brushed all over, which is something that extends down to the case where you're going to see a neat and welcomed cutout on the left side of the case. This cutout not only looks pretty cool, but it actually removes a bit of weight from the watch and the screw down crown on the right side is going to help give this watch its 660 feet of water resistance. The lugs are pretty small, so they don't add too much to the diameter of this watch and it doesn't make it wear big at all. It, does, it hasn't rubbed into my wrist when I've been wearing it, you know, pretty much for a week straight, uh, like the lugs do on some other watches, but they're big enough that they're gonna do their job in protecting the crown from bumping into anything if you're actually going in the ocean with it. The other thing that helps the water resistance is a screw down case back with the familiar Axe Insignia again, uh, inscribed here, which I absolutely love. This is a kind of fun and aggressive watch. So having an ax engraved on the case back is just plain badass. It's a very deep engraving and that adds to the comfort. So it's not going to stick on your wrist when you get sweaty and it's just nicely done because the ax um, insignia itself is raised and recessed at a couple different points. So that's a nice touch. One thing I want to note here, and I don't know if it is just the case on my watch or if it's all the watches coming from these guys, is but this axe insignia is perfectly lined up uh, to go with the same orientation as the rest of the watch. And uh, that's not something on the case with every other watch. My long jeans, Hydro Conquest, and my Seiko. Uh, Two watches I have with screw down case backs, both engraved, actually don't line up like that straight with the watch there off to the side. So it's a little thing. I don't actually know if it was done purposefully, 
but I appreciate it. Moving on to my favorite part of the watch, we have the dial and the bezel, which are instantly eye-catching. I have actually, and I kid you not, gotten more compliments on this watch this week than with all my other watches combined that I've been wearing for years. There's a lot going on here with the bezel and the dial, so we're gonna have to break it down. Talking about the bezel, it's a deep black ceramic. It's a pretty standard spacing and layout for a dive bezel with a couple big unique differences. This bezel is fully loomed with C3 Swiss Super Luminova. And leading up to the 30 minute mark, you have the inclusion of Nordic runes rather than the lines. They left the 15 minute mark standard so that you don't get confused if you actually were to go diving with this watch. But the fact that they did this when they could have easily and more affordably skipped out on this, it says a lot about the brand. It's a totally unique feature you're not going to see anywhere else. Um, the only two brands I can think of to make Nordic inspired watches is Hemsdahl's Workshop and Goss. A Goss watch costs like 20 to 30 grand plus a pop. So this is kind of your only option unless you get a pretty fat bankroll. These runes look really cool when they're lit up. So stick around to the end of the video and I'm gonna give you guys a loom shot. The knurling on the bezel is really deep and it catches the light really well. Because it's so deep, it makes the bezel a breeze to turn. But with that said, it's without a doubt tight enough that it's not going to be turning by itself on accident. My one and only small critique of this watch is there is a small amount of back play or slack to the bezel. It's not enough that it's going to push it backwards uh, like a, to another notch. And for non-watch freaks, it's probably not an issue at all. Unnoticeable, negligible. It's just not firmly as fixed or cemented down as, say, like my Omega Seamaster. But, that, uh, but that's a $5,000 watch, so I don't really feel like that's a, a fair comparison. And Omega is a brand that is well established, been around for a long time. This is a much smaller micro brand that has never designed a diver before. So in my book, this bezel is a big win in a totally acceptable for the price range. Most watches, I'd say similar price range, you're not gonna get as unique of a bezel, you're probably not gonna get full loom, and um, you might not be getting ceramic either. So yeah, big win in my book. Moving on to the dial, my favorite and probably the most unique aspect of this watch. There's a lot going on here, and there is a 3D dimensionality to this watch that's hard to describe unless you see this watch in person, but I'm going to do my best. We'll start with the most superficial, moving down. Bright red seconds hand with a smooth sweep, so you know you get an automatic movement. A Miyota 8215 to be exact, which I think is a good fit for this watch. Next, we have the big broadsword shaped minute and hour hands that also has a hearty application of that C3 Luminova. The hour hand extends slightly over the applied indices, which are filled flush with more of that loom. Extending from the center of the dial is a gold tone helm of R or Visinger symbol, which is this watch's namesake. It catches the light a lot and it's applied like the indices, so it adds to the three-dimensional effect of this watch. At the three o'clock position, you get in the white date wheel, and on the most superior branch of this Visinger symbol, you get in that gun-held axe insignia, and it's in a nice circular loom. The Helm of Art, or Helm of Terror, I've heard it been called, or the Visinger symbol, is understood to be one of the most powerful, but still mysterious, Nordic symbols. It's known to give courage and protection to Viking warriors in battle, but it instills fear in their enemies. I think it's a perfect fit for this watch. And Gunhild states that they put it in this watch because it always will uh, kind of give you guidance, and that's perfect for a dive watch. Now behind all of this, you're getting something that I've never seen before, a brushed brass dial. It works well with all the other colors, and because it's brushed, I assume that everyone's is probably going to look a little bit different, kind of like a meteorite dial. 
and it reflects the light spectacularly. At every angle, it highlights a different brush stroke, so it effectively changes the look of the dial and it adds a lot of character to this watch. I hope that the camera does its justice here because I feel like this is something you kind of got to see firsthand. As a sum total, you have a dial bezel combination that is somehow in unison, both outside of the box and different, but is also clean, symmetrical, and refined. You wouldn't think it works, but it does. This is a limited edition run of this watch, and it's gotten a lot of buzz, and they're almost sold out. Out of 400 total made, I believe they have under 100 left. I'm going to put the direct link in the video down below so you guys can check it out and pick one up there if you're interested. I don't know if it's cheating, but I think that if they wanted to kind of make this watch again, I'd actually love to see this watch in a no-date format because I think it would add to the already clean look on the dial and the symmetrical aspect of it. But the date is cool, in my opinion. I just think that would, you know, be another uh, kind of limited run they could do. And I think a lot of people would like it. I love the fact that they didn't put text anywhere on the dial. We don't need the words automatic, a water resistance on this dial. It's just going to cloud it up. And uh, we're going to get that implied from other aspects of the watch. So I think that's another win, in my opinion. Last but not least, I want to cover the crystal. We're getting a double domed sapphire crystal that provides some pretty cool distortion if you catch it at the right angle. But it's also easy to see when you're looking at it straight on. It's pretty similar to the older Breitling Super Ocean that I reviewed early on in my channel. So if you're an OG viewer and you remember that video, thanks for the continued support. I'd say as a total package, this is a unique, robust, well-built diver that you can pick up for under $500, priced at $395 to be exact. Please let me know what you guys think down below of this watch, and I can't wait to see what else this brand has up their sleeve. But before we get to that, I just want to show you guys a loom shot. I'm going to actually give you guys two loom shots. So this first one is in a dimly lit room where we're still getting a little bit of light. As you can see, all the loom looks really great, but I wanted to show you it in this light because you can still see that Helm of Awe symbol uh, kind of glowing off of the loom. And I think that's a really cool look. The next loom shot is a really, really dark room and you're only gonna see the loom. We're not able to see that Helm of Awe. And I think that's a total different look on this watch but it's a good one so i want to show you guys that well as well. either way this watch has some really good loom and i just love the look of those runes when they're uh, lit up like this let me know what you guys think below let me know your thoughts on this watch guys and uh if you're a fan like i am thanks so much for watching i'll catch you guys on the next one again big shout out to gun hill watches Love what you guys are doing. Can't wait to see what you got up your sleeve next. Thank you.